Hiya and welcome to this video on what you need to know before you sail with Azamara Cruises. This video will tell you about the things that I found most useful to know before and after I was on my cruise with Azamara. And I'll start off with really simple stuff of what's included in your fare. First off is knowing that there is a complimentary drinks package included in your fare. Normally you'd pay through the roof for alcoholic drinks to be included in your cruise, but on Azamara, the complimentary package includes alcoholic drinks, including all types of wine, beer, soft drinks, water, like there's bottled water in your room, complimentary, which is restocked all the time. It's so good. And unless you really care about which wines you're drinking, like specific brands, then you don't really need to pay more for the upgraded beverage package. I found the complimentary one was just fine and that the quality was actually quite good of the wines included. So you really don't need to spend any money on drinks if you don't want to. Second off is gratuities are included. So where normally you would either prepay them or you'd pay them at the end of your cruise, you don't have to worry about that at all on Azamara, which is super great. And also another perk is that shuttle buses are usually included. Some ports where you don't need a shuttle bus, they won't run one or you can pay extra to get one. But in ports where you did need a shuttle bus, it was always included in your fare. There were a couple of times where we were docked up against an MSC and you could tell that they were paying for that shuttle bus and we could just hop on one for free, which was really great. Some kind of side things which you may or may not use, fitness classes are also included. They were often running yoga in the morning and evening and spinning as well. And you could just turn up and do the class. The laundrette is also free, so you don't have to pay to do any washing. You can pay to have laundry done professionally by them, but they did have one room on a ship with quite a few uh, washing machines and dryers in, which you could just turn up and use, including like the tablets and everything, which was super easy. However, it was quite busy, especially kind of mid-cruise. Literally everybody was trying to use it. So that's something to be aware of in planning, but really good that you can wash your clothes for free instead of just, you know, washing your socks in the sink. Some other things we really like about Azamara, which is included, is the speciality events. So one of them, which was our personal favorite, was the white night. It was our favorite evening and you need to know to take white clothes with you. There were some people that didn't wear white on the white night party, but they did kind of stick out like I saw them. You didn't have to wear completely white. A lot of people did, but you know, stuff like a white shirt or a white dress or skirt or whatever, a, a hint of white in your outfit and then you don't stick out so much but you don't have to go to the white night if you don't want to there's also the as amazing evening so something to know is to check on your itinerary where your as amazing evening is this is basically a night where they take you off onto land and they do a cultural evening so they'll put a show on with say dances from a local dance group and also a buffet of cultural food wherever you are. So be prepared for that as well and don't book anything over that time period because it is complimentary and it's something that you will want to attend because it's something that's unique to Azamara. Also another thing to keep an eye out for is the brunch. They run a brunch every cruise itinerary and it's not really well advertised. So you'll need to keep an eye out in your daily schedule for the brunch. It's held in the main restaurant and they put on this huge spread of food. So don't eat breakfast before and don't plan anything for lunch either because they run it between breakfast and lunch time. So definitely check that one out, keep an eye out for it. Something that caught us out on our cruise was shore excursions. Azamara are really good in that even before you book the cruise, you can see what your shore excursions could be. They have them listed on each of the destinations in the cruise itinerary online. But something that caught us out is that a lot of them got booked up really early. Because it's a small ship, they didn't put on too many shore excursions and sometimes they can even be cancelled if not enough people sign up. But if you really want to go on a shore excursion, please book them early. We really wanted to do a disembarkation tour of Rome before we flew out, but it didn't happen even though we tried many different ways. Um, it just got completely booked up and we didn't end up doing it in the end, which was a really big shame. This is something as well to keep in mind because a lot of people travel with Azamara because of the destinations and because of the shore excursions. So if there's something you're really keen on, definitely book it up early. Also with booking, speciality dining is something to consider ahead of time. Azamara is really good in that their two speciality dining restaurants only cost $35 a head and they often do dining packages as well. So have a think about how many times you wanna to go to speciality dining restaurants. We did a three night package for uh, $85 each, which is a lot cheaper than a lot of other speciality dinings on other cruise lines. So keep that in mind. Another thing as well I would keep in mind is research what type of cabin you want. We booked a 
guaranteed ocean view when we went on our Azamara trip and we were really actually disappointed in the room. I've done a video on it, I'll put it in the corner and in the description so you can check that out if you're thinking about doing an ocean view room. But there's quite a lot of subcategories to each category of stateroom and check out what that actually means for you and if you really care about it. Something else as well to know before you go on is that Azamara is a small ship company. I think the Pursuit and the Onward take about 800 passengers so they are a lot smaller than most mainline cruise ships which means that they do move around in rough seas. I'm quite a seasoned cruiser and I don't really get affected by seasickness that much but I do prefer mid to large ships just because they do have that level of stability to them and I was really shocked at how much we were moving around on the Azamara Pursuit. It wasn't too much of an issue, but definitely be prepped with seasickness tablets and choose an itinerary which is quite sheltered and coastline oriented if this is something that worries you, but don't let it put you off. If you've been on Asmara and have any tips or tricks or things to know, please put them in the comments or any questions, please just comment them and please like and subscribe this video to help us out.